so the bible says this in proverbs chapter 4 now right 4 verse 23 it says guard your heart you see that with all diligence this is the bible it said keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are what the issues the quality of your life is locked up within your mindset i believe god for anything i believe god can take this ministry to any height hallelujah i do not ever believe that there can be limitations in the work of god that's my mindset right that's why you see members of living faith for instance they are men of faith because they are a reflection of the conviction of the founder being a man of rugged faith it's in living faith you hear that a man died and they carried him and rubbed oil from his head to his toe till he came back and they come to testify do you have the gods to do that kind of thing it's in living faith you hear that a man died and for three days his wife was with the man on the bed and said you are still my husband you are alive and after three days he comes back to life he did not need to necessarily change them he first changed himself listen if you are not changed your words will not carry power your words only reflect the authority based on the change that has occurred in you that's why see let me tell you if Creflo Dollar or any of these people who are really well they come right now and teach you on prosperity some of you will be crying and you hate poverty forever not necessarily because what they are sharing is deep they are communicating their reality if Sam comes and holds the mic and begins to worship what he is reflecting to you is an overflow of his reality the deposit of the anointing within him are you hearing what i'm saying that's why you can listen to another musician and nod your head and frank edwards for instance can sit on his keyboard and play the same song and you are crying brothers and sisters leaders influence people by becoming the change they want the people to be right that means when i become convicted by my ideologies it will influence your perception and it will be easy to change you that's why the more successful a man becomes the easier it becomes to influence others because his life now has sufficient testimonies are we getting blessed many of us want to see changes in our lives in 2015 hear me change will never come if you are still blaming people you and god in partnership with his word are the only requirements for that change to come if you do not allow the word of god to renew your mindset i promise you you will never get anything in your life that has not first become a reality and a deposit in your spirit is somebody hearing what i'm saying that's where it is out of this that all kinds of religions bring a lot of metaphysics and what they call um, astral meditation, right? So they tell you, put a picture of the, the jeep and you look at it and say, ah! They say, now see yourself in the jeep. They say, I'm driving. You see, that is madness. But I'm only trying to tell you that they stole those laws. They are an aberration, a corruption of spiritual laws that's why whenever god wants to bless a man god convinces you and makes sure you agree with him if you don't agree with him it will never happen in your life for a long time god kept telling abraham i want to change you abraham could not get it because of his idol worship mentality and god said come out i don't know what to do to come out he says start counting the stars abraham was counting and he was seen he will count and miss god said do it just continue and his mind was acclimatizing and abraham said wow and the bible says finally abraham believed and it was counted unto him for righteousness when the angel appeared to gideon gideon said oh, oh, don't deceive me the angel took time he didn't quarrel gideon because he knew that if gideon did not agree with him nothing will happen and gideon said i need proof let the cloth be wet let the ground be dry he said no problem 
if that's what it takes to adjust your mindset to authorize us go ahead and Gideon said now don't be offended let the cloth be dry I, I want to convince myself when Mary said how shall these things be Gabriel owed her an explanation and it took time to explain and she said I believe although I've never seen how a woman gives birth without a man but I believe and he said be it unto me according to your word instantly she got pregnant Zechariah had seen a lot of spiritual laws that's why when he doubted Gabriel he said let's shut the mouth of this man he's going to use the next spiritual law I'm about to teach you to change what we want to do is somebody learning something hear me this is what makes ministry easy I never spend time just wondering how do we publicize to get crowd koinonia will be a reflection of the quality of both the spiritual the intellectual and the physical ideologies of the leaders you change a system by changing the leaders are you hearing what i'm saying many of our fathers did not change themselves they took one bottle of gouda and slapped you when you took one cup did you change you see that because they have become a reality for you and they are saying if i catch you drinking that's the day i'll kill you go and buy me gulda job they just finished talking to you and they said go and buy it please hear me if you want to see changes in your life you are going to have to find out what ideologies have kept me where i am there are some of you who never believe god can bless you right as you're looking at me right now if god even says he will give you hundred thousand you say amen you know that kind of unbelieving amen listen let's not make god look like a liar this is the year of the rain there are some of you who god wants you to walk in levels of anointing you have never seen there are some of you who want to god wants you to walk in certain depths but do you believe him there is nothing God has told me that I've not believed. I don't announce things till I'm sure I've believed it. When I believe it, I don't care who believes it again. So be it. The word of the Lord will come to pass. When God told Noah, he said, rain is coming. Build an ark. Do you think Noah just said, yes, sir? No. Noah would have said, God, my name is Noah. Your name is Yahweh. You're, you are almighty. We are not the same. Convince me convince me when noah was convinced after 120 years based on x timing he still didn't give up we talk about abraham who waited 25 years what of noah noah waited 120 years i'm sure people will say look when we were 50 years when i gave birth to three children this stupid man was busy building this ark he has been searching for gopher wood around the whole world to build searching for gum searching for a lot of things and then when he finished we now saw him going to the jungle looking for every kind of bed imagine what they would have told his wife say madam did you have to marry this man but listen one day one day his confidence in god showed him listen you may be tight in now you are seeing what God is doing in your life. You are seeing the anointing of the Spirit upon your life. It may not show. The Bible says, while we look not at the things that are what? Seen. But the things that are unseen. I'm giving you a scriptural proof. It said, for the things that are seen are what? Temporal. That means there is a level of confidence and renewal that can change anything you see before you. brothers and sisters do you believe this pastor jakes is here he will testify right from when the ministry this used to be all of us who form a Aaron is here who form a circle and all just sit down on the floor i made certain statements like a fool right but today and listen this is not even it yet you wait and see what god will do with us oh i believe him i believe him absolutely carve upon my heart this truth that sets me free 
according to your do you know your academic situation can change please i'm speaking to somebody do you know your destiny can change if you keep thinking we are the helpless nigerians i guarantee you after 50 years you will celebrate golden jubilee suffering but i will feed nations huh i may be rubbing granite oil as 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 vaseline but a day will come why we look not brothers and sisters as i look at you i don't see the weak you that's why i say as i look at you i see nations nations who told you you will not be the mother of nations i'm 30 years so what so what about 30 years would you stand and say i saw when i was 23 i know that the lord told me i'm giving birth to a prophet and it's going to arise that vision is still there i am convinced yeah the things that we see are subject to change one day you are taking your bath and you see growths and tumors all around your body you just say hey this is how i'm going to die cancer and the devil said not just cancer fibroids fibroid. notice do you know that many sick people may carry certain sicknesses for years and never fall sick because doctor has not told them now doctors don't be don't be sad i'm just saying because you did you did not know it was not your reality many men were carrying prostate cancer carrying all kinds of things many ladies carrying fibroids carrying a lot of things and nothing happened to them but the day they looked and said do you know do you really know the implication of ss are you aware that the way that this has been happening you won't get a child in fact the way we are looking cat is your womb self it's not looking like the womb of a human being you just say ah and you now start saying that means no marriage a godly brother comes and you say my brother i'm pitying you you i don't want you to suffer in this life reality i hope you are laughing and you are see i'm telling you the secret to some of these results that you see these are my contemplations those who know me know that my reality is defined i never surround myself with nonsense you don't come around me gossiping and, and gossiping and speaking because i know that i am absolutely in control this has become the mirror to my world this is how i see things i only see things consistent when i'm going for a meeting i know there will be an outpouring of the spirit i don't care whether they have faith or not i don't care whether they can believe or not whether they are instrumentalists to charge the atmosphere or not is irrelevant when i step there i know that i bring an atmosphere i carry my own spiritual climate me and the holy spirit a team the workers in this ministry have received of this spirit that's why in the afternoon they arrange chairs and they dress who guaranteed them that you were coming did you sign a form we having the same spirit of faith as it is written koinonia hear me tonight we are only 23 or 24 days into january you can sit down with this your belief system and you will celebrate christmas in this condition or you can rise up ah but i know people who love god they have died i know people who love god things have happened brothers and sisters we are talking about you here not your neighbor the just shall live by his faith hallelujah do you believe this i read a story of somebody 109 years still alive in fact three women they were even putting makeup 109 years life and strong in the midst of this wicked world they don't expect what do you expect in your life see these are powerful spiritual laws the second law give me five minutes genesis chapter one verse three quickly please the creative power of words i know that we have been taught that words are powerful but I want to show you the spiritual dimension of words. There is a reason why God called himself the word. You know why God named himself the word. 
it says and god did what and god not and god wished not and god expected not and god complained he said the earth was dark and void and formless and god the talking spirit said the word said there doesn't mean and god declared what it meant was god commanded it to be so the word said there does not just mean and god recited no god didn't recite anything say i'm healed i'm healed that's recitation you are not talking what many people have been talking in the body of christ that they are calling confession is recitation i'm telling you this Con the word confess comes from the greek word homologio it's not just repeat what you say is you are giving an empowerment to say it i prophesy as i was commanded he said and god said let there be light and there was light and you read the verses down the line it says and god said and he saw and god said and he saw and god said and he saw listen to me words are powerful because when you speak a word it activates spiritual laws and activates other laws listen to me there are many laws that make realities to work the key to activating their operation is in words are you hearing what i'm saying so when you speak whether you realize it or not something is loose and something is tied it depends on what is loose and what is tied please follow me the bible says how did he put it now whatsoever you bind right do you bind just by tying a rope jesus looked at a fig tree and he didn't need to say the law of fruitfulness cease operation from this tree the law of regeneration stop i command the fertilizer don't enter the root again he just used words and activate all the laws that needed to be activated for that tree to shrink are you hearing what i'm saying ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of learning all the laws, God gives you the keys that activates them. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when I declare and I say, I am healed, I release a lot of spiritual laws. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If we stand now and I declare, I say in the name of Jesus, the power of God will start moving in this place. Suddenly you hear people falling and shouting. Why didn't it happen now? Listen. The words that I'm speaking are activating both the operation of angels, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Our words activate the dimension of God that is revealed in a meeting. That's why when during miracle service, the worship people sing songs that invoke that dimension. Are you getting what we're saying if you know this you will know that from morning till night some of you have activated woes and tragedies in your life are you hearing what i'm saying listen let's let me show you a few scriptures at time i've been fighting i'm 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 sorry we've been closing so late we'll see what we can do about it it's just the passion in my heart psalm 141 verse 3 media please help us let's rush so that we get up and round up <sighs> Sita bala kata bala bala. psalms 141 verse 3 it says set a watch O lord before where and do what keep a door knowing that every time i speak my mouth didn't just open a door open in the spirit the opening of my mouth is the opening of a door in the spirit it says set a watch oh god this my mouth can lead me in trouble so set a watch set a watch over my mouth numbers chapter 14 verse 28 zebra toka shila kariata koso brandi katayara ba vindike sila kariaba numbers 14 verse 28 very quickly everyone read one to read 28 28 say unto them as truly as i live saith the lord 
as ye have spoken in my ears so i will do what as i hear you say not wish he said let the redeemed of the lord he already called you redeemed but he says say it let the shield of the lord say so let the prosperous of the lord say so let the anointing of the the anointed of the lord say so they are not reminding themselves they are activating that reality everybody say when i speak i activate realities say it again when i speak i activate spiritual laws that's right it depends on what law you activate but something must be activated when you understand this you will know that words are expensive let's look at just two more verses proverbs 18 verse 21 if you can look at that proverbs 18 you can write it down father you reign great are you lord you are greatly to be praised listen death and life are where did he say death and life are on top of your head did he say death and life are it says death and life are in the power the proceeds of the tongue and like a seed they that love it shall eat the fruit that grows from that seed the bible says the seed is the word in the parable of the sower what is the seed meaning every time you speak you sow the seed is that true he said the seed is the word so when i begin to speak even in tongues i'm sowing i'm activating laws in the spirit when i begin to pray my day is blessed in the name of the lord jesus i am lifted i'm activating spiritual laws and i authorize the spirit of god to begin to schedule opportunities to schedule certain things and you find out that after prayer you activate laws of favor as you are stepping out you bump into your destiny helper you call it coincidence the bible calls it life that your tongue released that's why job said what i have feared most has come upon me Proverbs 13 verse 3. Proverbs 13 verse 3. Please let's read it together. He that keepeth his mouth. Stop. How do you keep your life? Insurance. Answer me. I'm not against insurance. Do life assurance, life insurance. But the Bible, the written word of God, the living logos. He that keep, how do you keep your life in the spirit? By keeping your mouth. Ah. Papa Hagin said this. Kenneth Copeland said this. Those guys said these things. So many people. I speak life. I speak life. I speak life. He said I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. But I can only advise you. Choose. He said he that keepeth his mouth. Keepeth what? He said, but he that openeth wide his lips, speaking nonsense any day, any time, and saying it does not matter, he says that he shall have what? As a fruit. Brothers and sisters, listen. Ladies, when we are, when we are about to pray, in the midst of your prayer, you will lay your hands on your womb and pray and say, no devil. No devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you are afraid right now. The rate at which ladies are scared of fibroid is alarming. You are just eating too much. You look at your stomach and say, this, this, thing, this is how it starts. I have the power to create. And I have the power to destroy. The power of words is in its ability to activate spiritual laws. That's what I want you to know. Many of us have been taught that words are powerful, but what makes it powerful? Words are keys in the spirit. They activate laws. So now, it's not just blind confession. Oh, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. As if you are reciting a magic formula. No, that's madness. 
you speak out of the abundance of knowledge that when I declare that I am blessed I am activating something you wait until we have the other series that we have there are so many things that you will learn this year two laws you have learned tonight the first one is that there are spiritual laws and that one of the laws listen is that to change your outside you change what is inside stop wasting your time whatever you don't like outside get the renewal the mind component of what you want outside bill johnson got it right when he wrote the book the supernatural power of a transformed mind i don't expect this ministry to ever go down we will keep speaking it we will keep rising I expect every one of you in this year to break on every side and whenever I pray for you that's what I pray I don't pray blindly and say Lord eh, your will be done I know what his will is his will is not fake his spirit has revealed his will in his word I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper for I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end hallelujah rise up on your feet we are going to pray we will pray for just five minutes but I want us to take this serious because as we are praying something will be happening to you lift your voice and thank him for the word the reality of spiritual laws bless him bless him for the word don't trivialize what you have received it has changed kings it has made champions you only arise and shine when your light comes and then the glory of the lord rises upon you hallelujah three quick prayer points prayer point number one you are going to say lord let the ministry of the holy ghost be strong in my life so that you will open me up to these deep mysteries lift your voice and pray pray no matter your spiritual level even if you're just visiting for the first time pray from the depths of your heart please pray inside and in the overflow lift your voice and pray it's the year of the rain holy spirit overshadow me in a new dimension open me up to the mysteries and the depths and the dimension hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two you are going to pray and say lord whatever needs to change in my life for my the quality of my life to change let the word of god change it change my inner reality change my mindset lift your voice and cry passionately your life is at the mercy of this prayer lord i desire a new level of excellence a new level of grace a new level of possibility in my life go ahead and pray help me to believe in you help me to believe in you help me to believe in you as the healer help me to believe you are able help me to believe you are mighty change my mindset change my perception change my perception 
about prosperity change my perception about protection change my perception about spiritual power change my perception about my academics change my perception about my marriage change my perception about my ministry about my business about my job about my husband about my wife about my organization lift your voice and pray your life is a reflection an eventual reflection of your convictions of your perceptions oh it's a powerful spiritual law i pray you believe it i pray you believe it hallelujah last prayer point father imprint in my spirit the revelation that my words are powerful go ahead and pray imprint in me lord i cancel every negative word that i've spoken in my life i cancel it by the blood of jesus confessions i made when i was angry i cancel it by the blood of jesus dangerous laws i activated that killed favor in my life confessions that killed my prayer life confessions that killed my my integrity lift your voice and pray koinonia outside make sure you are praying no matter how far you are no matter how far you are Connect with us in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now find a neighbor and for the next one minute, I'd like you to activate laws over that person's life. Activate favor. Activate grace. Activate hunger for spiritual things. Close every door of witchcraft close every door of failure find a serious neighbor that came to koinonia to pray lift your voice and pray i bless this house in the name of jesus i command favor upon your people i command favor i command long life I saw seeds of greatness. I saw seeds of power. I release the operation of the Holy Ghost upon lives, upon families. I command supernatural dreams. I command visions. I release encounters with the Holy Ghost encounters with the spirit of might encounters of favor encounters of power i command no death no accident no terrorism no bomb blast no witchcraft in the name of jesus the son of the living god i command every law that has been activated that is being manipulated by darkness over your life to bring failure to bring woes i cancel it by the blood of the eternal covenant bless your neighbor i bless you i bless you i bless you let the fountain of the heavens be open for you let men look for you may they bless you may you become the subject of discussion i bless your academics i change your result i change your genotype i command promotion to your job increase in your ministry increase in your business increase in your anointing
Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Listen. What I'm teaching you now is the true spirit of prophecy. Many people speak, but the problem is we, don't, we have not been taught what happens in the spirit when we speak. In one minute, I want to release words in your life. Listen. Now you know what happens. Listen. Demonic spirits, enchantments and spells, all they do is to activate laws against you. That's all that happens. When they enchant things, the Bible says in Job chapter 5, that you will be delivered from the scourging tongues of men. Men use their tongues to tie your destiny. Men use their tongues to tie your womb. But I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood. Lift your hands and receive this prophecy. In the name that is above all names. I command opportunities. I command opportunities. I command favor. In the name of the Son of the Living God. I command favor. I activate favor. From the realm of the Spirit. The reign of favor. The reign of goodness. The reign of favor. The reign of goodness. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak against every infirmity that has challenged your body. The power that spoke it into being, I cause that power and I command that that infirmity leaves your body now. These hands that are lifted, may men bring finances to that hand. I prophesy it in the name of the Lord Jesus. That this week that is coming, these hands that are lifted, I tell you, many of you will return with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever manipulates your intelligence so that you don't understand what is taught, whatever tears the devil sowed among the wheat, Makote Lekepara Tadikata, in the name that is above all names. I release you from that power now. Hear me? Anyone here who has been caused by your parents, they did not know they were angry, but they didn't know they activated a law that has made things to work against you. I stand under this apostolic office tonight. I reverse that law in the name of Jesus. I reverse that law in the name of jesus for everyone that calls you i bless you i bless you some of us everything works for everybody until it gets to your turn things are so hard a little thing you have to suffer in the name of jesus in this year of the rain i prophesy upon your life let supernatural ease come to your life. Whoever must call you and help you and open the door for your next level, wherever they are, in the name of Jesus, the same way wise men saw the star and they went to Jesus with gifts, I call them wherever they are. May they come to you in the name of Jesus. I release upon you grace beginning from today whatever you do will prosper every enchantment that killed your prayer life so you stop speaking you stop waking up in the night to pray and orchestrate things powers were invoked to make you sleep and not wake up and pray right now I stretch my hands to the heavens and in the name of the God of heaven, I command those spells broken. May your prayer life resurrect in the name of Jesus. Hear me. The grace to wake up in the night and speak into the womb of the morning. I release that grace upon you. Ladies, whoever has called you weak, 
and whoever has said you will not amount to anything in the name of the Lord Jesus I cancel that statement now in the name of Jesus hear me whatever your life has been associated with before now sickness failure lack of spiritual fire in the name of Jesus I change that situation now I change that situation now I change that situation now hear me any human agent responsible for where you are except I am not called of God in the name of Jesus we release a sword of judgment we release a sword of judgment hear me I say it again that if there is any human agent that has participated in the downfall of your life your finances and your family I command judgment now I command judgment now the brother that shared the testimony 2005 to 2015 whatever wants to tie you that when others are moving you will not move forward in the name of Jesus I release you today in the name of Jesus hallelujah your assignment for this week as we prepare for the miracle service next week Friday will be fire in this place we will engulf this place with fire hallelujah please make sure you invite everyone you truly love God is good this is the year of the rain there is no distance that is too far for anybody who truly wants solution in their lives are you hearing me there are people that have been needlessly barren for decades what for what for is there no barn in Gilead the problem is we are talkers we speak a lot of rubbish without revelation well let me tell you not everyone is fake there are men that have taught something truly in the spirit hallelujah lift your hands and give him thanks we're out of time Jesus we bless you Jesus we bless you Jesus we bless you our time is up but I just want you to be patient for a few minutes those who have never given their lives to Christ now listen this is very serious this is one of the reasons why we stand in the realm of the spirit your connection matters if you are not in Christ inside and outside or at one time you have committed your ways to God but for some reason you found yourself your life just went haywire and you're saying Lord I want to start 2015 on a very good note wherever you are inside and outside I'm giving you an opportunity to come out here right now quickly to give your life to Jesus and to rededicate your life. Don't wait for anybody. You know yourself. The Lord is speaking to you. Encourage them. Encourage them if there are any people. Inside and outside, no matter how far. This is very important. God bless you. God bless you. They are coming. Appreciate them. Don't be afraid. The devil is a liar. Koinonia, clap for them. Encourage them. We call the devil a liar tonight sister don't sit back there it's a new season it's time to get serious with jesus it's time to say lord i give up everything i mean business with you i mean business with you they are coming from outside celebrate them they are coming to jesus they are coming to jesus they are coming to jesus keep coming we're out of time but keep coming they are coming to jesus as you come here, begin to talk to Jesus Christ. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Talk to the Lord passionately from your heart. Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, it's over. I mean business with you tonight. I mean business with you tonight. He said, if I, by the finger of God, Please pray in one minute where you are and say, Lord, 
let it come like the dew of heaven upon my life the anointing I don't know how else to teach you this you must desire the anointing the anointing will bring favor to your life I'm telling you in one day it will open doors of prosperity you never imagine you don't need to know nobody I'm telling you the anointing can bring peace to that family it can bring peace the anointing can bring peace hallelujah listen there are many of us we have been able to take steps from the teachings that have been coming here but for many of us the missing ingredient is that anointing samson with the anointing did mighty things when when what's the name of that lady when delilah came delilah was attacking the all she was concerned about was the anointing are you getting my point delilah had no business whether samson was strong no 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 she said what is the source of your strength tell me that's all i want to know not when are you going to marry me not when will you take me to chicken republic i want to know how come you are a man who is so slim yet you remove gates yet you use jaw bones to do mighty things what is the secret and samson kept it the anointing was hidden in his hair right according to the prophecy that was given there was a spiritual code that governed the operation of the anointing and he was told to protect it as a nazarene he would not cut his hair the spirit of the antichrist walked in delilah to keep luring him and samson said do this and that and she cried and said samson all she was after was the anointing that's why the devil is called antichrist the one who fights the anointing he fights the anointing he uses all kinds of things to fight the anointing blackmails to fight the anointing your past failures all he's attacking is the anointing because when you lose the anointing you've lost it and she shaved the head of samson samson the philistines are after you he got up they didn't tear any part of his body but the anointing left and he was as weak as any ordinary man and then they removed his eyes immediately and samson began to be a slave the only thing that came back to samson's life was the anointing when they went and samson stood and began to ask god for mercy they kept samson the anointing was being mocked by a dragon a god and they said you who has troubled the philistines but samson said oh lord and while in minutes the hair began to grow they didn't know they didn't notice it they were dancing and when the hair came suddenly the anointing came brothers and sisters when the anointing is on your life the result is instant 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 the day you start preaching with the anointing everybody will know you don't need to tell everybody call me pastor they will call you ministers of our god when they see the anointing you don't need to tell anybody i'm a, I'm a great businessman let the anointing come the anointing please pray in one minute just do what i'm telling you to do say lord i need the anointing in my life i need the anointing in my life for those of us who have seen a measure or so of the anointing say lord increase my boundaries in the spirit <laughs> stretch the boundaries oh god in the spirit activate new possibilities in my life by the agency of the anointing let me lead by the anointing let me write that jam by the anointing let me write that wayek by the anointing let me write the exam by the anointing. Let me do my office activities by the anointing. 
Let me preach. Let me run this ministry by the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sit down. We have just about an hour or so and then we are done. Let me see how we can just touch whatever we can touch. We are supposed to start a new series tonight. And um, there is a special teaching on the anointing. I already sense that there are fountains that in the days to come we are going to touch in the spirit. Hallelujah. So all of the teachings have been preparations towards it. And um, I hope we will be able to touch it. We will just do a two-part series i think we'll just reduce it to a two-part series and touch whatever we touch then eventually we'll continue maybe by next month hallelujah oh i love the lord i love the lord we're taking a series called the imagines the imagines It's a series that seeks to reveal to us God's prophetic operation in the nations and in the continent of Africa right now. In this series, we're going to be exploring what God is currently doing now. We will unveil the plot of darkness that looms upon the nation. There are all kinds of terrorist groups arising. Right? Rebellion across the states what what is happening these things are prophetic writings on the wall and we need to understand and begin to see these things from the lens of prophecy the emergence so the first part of it is going to be talking about the prophecy the prophecy that is upon god's people the prophecy that is upon our nation the prophecy that is upon the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this end time and then I will also be touching on the making of reformers is the part one that's what we'll be doing today I will show you the spiritual system with which God makes men how men are made in the spirit how an ordinary man can become a man of power and stature in the spirit hallelujah then the next part of the series will be talking about the strategy, the ecclesia of God. God's strategy for this coming apostolic invasion. The Bible says, nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And so we need to be prepared now to align ourselves. God has always had a system. There has been a prophecy. Listen to me, please. I want you to know that we are in the middle of prophecy. We are in the middle of history. Hallelujah. The signs that the Bible begins to give that will happen are already happening. Look at what is happening in America. Look at what is happening in the Middle East. Down the sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria. Darkness looms across the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. The pride of kings have been humbled in these seasons. Economies are melting down. Several things are happening across the territories of the nations. And God did not leave us in the dark. Hallelujah. He said, for behold, darkness covers the earth. And gross darkness the people that was a reality that would happen at a particular point in history and this is that time when darkness is covering the earth there are all kinds of perversions right the speakings of the beast the antichrist put as a system and as an entity i had a lot to talk about tonight but i hope that 
the emergents, the occultic societies, the Freemasons, the Illuminatis, these fraternities that are a symbol of rebellion, they have marked their presence across the entire strata of human activities from the economy to the media to music. Watch this, please. But in this last day, because the system of the Antichrist also has its mode of operation. Are you getting my point now? The system of the Antichrist is the system that will usher in the presence of that figure. Not just a, as a system. And listen to me. There is a secret rebuilding of the Tower of Babel going on in the nations right now. Genesis 11 begins to tell us that a man under the influence of the spirit of the Antichrist called Nimrod, the son of Cush, he began to mobilize men to build a city that did not honor God. That city is being rebuilt again. Hallelujah. The governmental policies that are being put, the ideologies, according to Revelation 13 and when you read and so on and so forth, the speakings of the beast. Remember what John saw? John said he saw a lamb with horns and he was about to bow to that lamb. Remember? And about to bow when the lamb spoke. He saw a lamb but he had the voice of a dragon and immediately he said this is not the lamb. That was what John saw. Right? A mixing of the truth. Looks like the lamb. Talked like the lamb. Or acted like the lamb but his mouth began to betray and when john listened he said uh -uh, because my sheep hear my voice and he said this is not the voice of the lamb this is the voice of a dragon so there is a secret rebuilding of the tower of babel this this antichrist system you've heard a lot about the illuminati and their agenda and we all laugh and just think it's a figment of imagination but let me tell you something it is it is the strategy of the devil masquerading itself in secrecy but in these days there is an open show of darkness it's no longer a hidden thing are you getting what i'm saying it used to be a secret fraternity of the elite and so occasionally by divination they see through the vistas of time and they handpick potential people across music across the arts and entertainment across business and so they come to you with a proposal to manipulate things according to their will you become a benefactor when you sell your soul to the devil mystery babylon the ancient secret of initiation that brings men into fraternity with a system that is godless hallelujah and it is all the composition of the systems and so they went on with every kind of demonic manipulation let me tell you something i've said it again and again i have an apostolic call i'm not a pastor and so i'm not one of those who will sugarcoat a lot of things no no listen i tell you the truth aside from the war between israel and the war every war that is happening in this earth is a big drama theater and performing arts that's what is going on a secret manipulation of darkness please are you hearing what i'm saying i told you that the owner of i think it was mtv was asked and he said how come you have so much influence on the little children i think of ages 8 to 16 or there about and he laughed he said we don't influence them we own them we have developed a structure already that grows with them right and so they have invaded everything most of these organizations you celebrate are all fraternities of darkness they have signed their allegiance let me tell you satan is called the god of this world have you been told is it not in your bible the bible says he took jesus to a mountain and showed him the glories of this world and said if you bow that's the only condition bow means sell your soul bow means proof that you are not equal with god and i will give you and watch this i began to explore especially the music industry very intricately i don't know why the attention of darkness has moved very closely to music right the highest advocates of the illuminati are businessmen and musicians right 
please listen to me very important i'm showing you the structure we're going to talk about the emergence i hope is the I'm, I'm talking about the prophecy now darkness the word darkness there does not necessarily just mean like absence of light sunlight a system and remember the bible calls certain classes of spirits rulers of darkness that means their dominion is magnified when there is no light they are not called rulers of light rulers of darkness and so they have controlled the economy of nations they have controlled everything almost all the music artists that have been killed right all of those people you you used to know are people who at one point or the other started violating their allegiance because they looked and they found out that this is a system of injustice a system of darkness and any attempt to revolt will cost you your life please listen to me i have seen many things i'm not one of those who stands on stage and begins to prophesy national and all of that but let me tell you on the strength of my secret place the lord has shown me many things and one of the things that will begin to happen upon the nations of the earth is an open show of evil it's it they they have masqueraded it until they built sufficient structures now they are removing the mask and saying we are the ones make no confusion about it we are the ones that control your economy we are the ones that control your educational system we are the ones that control what your children watch we can manipulate technology i thought we'll have time today i would have shown you a few documentaries that will shock you maybe next week we'll do that right and you will be shocked to see the extent to which this antichrist system is already building the system of babylon taking anything that looks like god out there are two things that are of concern to me number one is what we call the demonic doctrine of universalism let me explain to you what that means look up please the teaching that every religion is an aspect of god are you hearing what i'm saying that is just different sides of seeing the same thing have you been taught that so there are all kinds of christian sects especially occultic sects branching out pseudo christian sects and they have one mission to be able to market this doctrine of in quote love and universalism that means it doesn't matter there are different ways to get to god rather than criticizing me find my similarity with you so that we become friends are you seeing that now it is the same spirit of acts chapter 16 when a lady who was with the spirit of divination when paul entered the city what happened she started looking for the areas of similarity he's fivefold i am fivefold he said these are mighty men why so that if paul preaches for three days or one week and goes out people will say you are the friend of paul so we will listen to you a system of darkness eating people up i've said it again and again i i i pray so much especially for our little children who are growing because the system was well designed this is not something that started 10 years ago 20 years 100 years no it's a strategy by the devil right they worked with demons to manufacture aids they worked with demons to manufacture cancer they worked with demons to bring ebola they are they are a deceitful people they claim they love africa they claim they love the nations they have sold their souls to the devil there is no iota of love in them they stand and tell lies because they own the televisions that give the news they own the papers that bring the news are you ready for tonight's teaching hmm. and right now there is no hiding again they are already beginning to come one by one opening up the fact that the fraternity of darkness they are involved with is the source of their strength they have acquired all the money they have acquired all the fame 
and everything and they are now manipulating people but the, another point i told you that the point of concern is this music why why is the attention of darkness so much on music i'll tell you why i began to find out that it was an ancient mystery that every time it was time to bow to a king or a deity music will precede that homage please are you hearing what i'm saying this is a, this is i pray that you'll get what i'm saying it was the custom of kings in ancient times they would stand upon the pinnacle of their temples and so they will now say all hail the king and there will be shofars that will be blown right and at the sounding of that shofar the entire nation will bow if it was a graven image they would do the same thing was that not what happened in the days of shadrach meshach and abednego you remember they told them that music will be played the moment you hear that music know that it is now time what follows that is a bowing and that's the same thing that is happening so the devil is already using the weapon of music to force men to bow to this god of gold that stature called the antichrist let me tell you something i'm already seeing the formation of the government of the antichrist upon the earth it's not something that will happen in one day or 10 years or 20 years but it is a formation there is already a formation of that godless system and if the church of the lord jesus christ does not arise to sustain the strategy from the spirit to be able to raise a standard then very soon we are going to be victims so there is an emergence because the bible told us the moment you see darkness covering the earth at the same time coincidentally the army is rising see that so is a teaching that prepares us revealing to us that every day brings us into the reality of prophecy every day everything that happens across the nation is right now prophetic politicians understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy individuals understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy did you know that koinonia you're coming here they are all interwoven in the prophecies of this book we may never know you may not find a place in this book written joshua selman or your name but it is all part of the prophetic agenda of god whether you believe it or not jesus is coming soon let me repeat myself whether you believe it or not i'm announcing to you that jesus is coming soon gullible preachers prefer talking about money than that but i am telling you jesus is coming soon say amen it's coming soon but before his coming he gave us an assurance that there will be a global awakening there will be an arising and imagine a clash of kingdoms so there is a prophecy that is upon the world that the knowledge of evil the rage of evil will increase the fierceness of wickedness will begin to multiply because the spirits that have been kept until this season as they are released from the pit of darkness they come with fierce anger the bible says satan has fallen upon the earth with great fury because he knows his time is short there is there are unleashings of arsenals of darkness and the church and the anointing is the target so marriages right now are under attack right marriage is under attack all kinds of things happening the devil is coming with all sorts of strategies and gimmicks but there is a generation that will call him a liar and we are that generation in the name of jesus christ but at the same time there is a prophecy upon us over there 121 we read it that saviors will arise out of Zion, the city the place of god the place where they have been built and trained and prepared saviors shall arise and he said they will judge the mount of Esau. that rebellious entity that system the antichrist system is called many things in the bible jezebel the dragon babylon egypt they are all an expression of one and the same government running from genesis to revelation that city of rebellion hallelujah 
but it's not enough for the church to know that there is a prophecy upon us that we have a prophetic destiny we must understand that there is a system with which god will build and make men and around three one great woman that uh, I've, I've read a bit of her uh, her you know her books and her encounters with jesus christ she began to talk about the coming revival i read a lot about revivals both past and present and the revivals to come i began to read about how she said that jesus appeared unto her she had encounters with jesus for like a year through genuine encounters and in that encounter he began to reveal to her about the coming revival and she was granted access to see the dealings and the preparations of the spirit and the way the inhabitants of the earth the church the ecclesia god's system of victory will be built and equipped hallelujah so there is a prophecy upon us say there is a prophecy upon my life say one more time there is a prophecy upon my life you must believe that you are not ordinary listen you're coming to koinonia whether you are inside or outside everything that is happening is leading you towards prophecy it may not look like it you came for koinonia with pains you came to zaria maybe as a student or you came to zaria maybe to serve or you came to zaria because you got a job or marriage brought you you in the midst of all of these confusions i want you to know that there is a line of prophecy there is something happening in your life that is bringing you towards prophecy praise the lord and it's important for us to know that but then how does god make men because it's not enough to just know that there there are reformers and revival is the making of reformers what is the spiritual process this will explain to some of us the happenings in our lives right now and it will help and encourage us to stay true as god is working on us hallelujah when the lord began to show me this my eyes were opened and i said my goodness can you imagine first peter chapter 4 verse 12 please Are you there? Everyone read is projected. One to read. Beloved, think it not what? Hold on. That means don't think it is a surprise to you. Don't don't act as though it were something strange. He said, think it not strange concerning the what? Fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. That's what the Bible is saying. I'm showing you the process, the mystery of the fullness of affliction. That fullness with which God makes men mighty. Please listen to me. God is ministering to us right now. There is no making of a champion without a process that will require pain, discipline, pruning, and alignment please don't forget this there is no champion i said it i think it was last week or the week before last nobody wins the olympic by mistake no man of god just happens to be anointed by mistake there's no such thing as that no one just carries the glory of god by mistake i want you to know that there is a spiritual pathway to accessing true power to accessing relevance and strength in the spirit to be a steward of God's finances to be a steward of God's glory to be a steward of God's grace very important and one of that mystery is the mystery of the fullness of affliction you may not like what this is but I want you to listen to me very carefully the fullness of affliction it was Job that began to speak to us and he began to communicate his the tragedy that came upon his life hallelujah it was paul that began to speak to us about a thorn in his flesh it was moses and all of these people joseph that went through certain things listen to me please tonight i want to change your understanding and your interpretation of affliction and trials 
now i know that i've done a teaching on that i think spiritual timings are there about you can listen to it there are certain things that happen to men that are orchestrated by darkness i personally do not believe that god willingly takes evil or darkness or trials or this and puts upon people however i believe that according to the system of his wisdom and sovereignty he is able to take advantage of situations in our lives and orchestrate that through them they are used as schoolmasters to prune and bring us to a point of stature and strength and relevance and usefulness in the spirit i believe that absolutely i don't know how many other people got their anointing and their grace but let me tell you there is no spiritual champion there is no principality in the kingdom that did not go through the mystery of the furnace of affliction you must understand this you don't have to pray against it there's nothing to bind there are you getting my point the only thing that happens for you or happens in your life at that point is grace the sustaining power of the spirit to go through it and finish well Isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 says fear not I have redeemed you he said I have called you by name you are mine he said when you pass through the waters I will be with you he said through the river it shall not overwhelm you but he said when you walk through the fire not run through it when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned when you walk through the fire listen to me it's very important the way they make the anointing in Israel they still do that I have I have I have anointing oil straight from Israel with with mar spikenard and all of these things that were used ancient ingredients the, the, the spices that were originally used it smells the exact requirement the ingredients God gave I have I have a um, a bottle of, of of anointing oil like that and every time I just put a little of that on my hand I keep looking at it and the fragrance is nice the smell but then i studied a bit on how they make that olive they have what they call a crushing stone right and they take that olive and they pour it there and they put a heavy stone upon it and they start turning round and it puts pressure and it begins to crush that olive and as it crushes the olive it begins to squeeze out the oil are you hearing what i'm saying it is that way that God will make you become a man of true power. Afflictions are not there to kill us. The fullness of affliction reveals the spiritual system that brings us to the point of obedience. Jesus said he learned obedience by the things he suffered. He learned it. It was not an impartation. He learned obedience. There were orchestrations in his life that compelled him to walk in obedience. You will not align yourself to spiritual things just by default. There is an operation of the spirit. There are happenings and orchestrations around your life that are aimed at bringing you to a point where you begin to see from God's perspective. And if you do not know that this is a pathway to carrying grace, you will run and allow the devil mock God in your presence. Say after me, God forbid. Hallelujah. The first thing I want you to know about challenges that is that number one affliction and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith let me deliver somebody right away there are many of us who are going through all kinds of situations right now from finance to your health to maybe marriage to whatever it is and we have been made to think that the entire reason why everything is happening to us is because of lack of faith let me tell you something i have learned by experience especially for students it's not every student who is suffering in class that is as a result of carelessness or laziness it's easy to conclude that people and look at them and say your cgp is on one point something you know it's a terrible thing you're an embarrassment to redemption however it may not be everybody but let me tell you there are a few people that they, there is a strange pathway in the spirit that they are taking that is taking them to where they themselves do not know just follow me there are many families 
that may not understand why in spite of their righteousness and their love for God, they are tithing and giving and they are committal to spiritual things. It looks like there are certain orchestrations that just seem to draw them back. It's like a, a cycle of woes and pain. I'm telling you this, that there are dimensions of the dealings of the spirit that are not demonic. It is called the mystery of the fullness of affliction. This, this teaching is not for babes. It's not just receive, receive. It, because I'm explaining to some of you the mystery behind what is happening in your life. In spite of your prayer, you hear God about everything but not that situation. And God looks silent. Lord, what is all this? And it looks like you receive a prophetic word for others but for you you have fasted for one week at the end of the prayer all the scriptures you had were about comfort i want you to know that there is a school you are passing through and what you are receiving is a lecture pay attention hallelujah moses did not know why he ran away and for 40 years there were certain processes he was going through he did not understand until the god of israel called him and told him that he there was a prophecy upon his life prophecies do not just manifest just because you love god there is a pathway it may not be for everybody but everyone who truly wants to be used by god goes through this pathway the fullness of affliction like a blacksmith right that melts metals to remove their impurities and now begins to carve them there are several um expressions in the bible that are used to describe this process the potter and the clay the blacksmith there are all kinds of processes the bible begins to tell us about the potter and the clay how that he picks up the clay smashes it right and now begins to mold it into fashion The furnace of affliction is a, is a pathway in the spirit. Is the route that leads you to Galatians 2.20. That realm called I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I but Christ that lives in me. And this life that I live in the flesh that is the body. I live by the faith of the son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. You come to a point where you have no life in your own. Your ego is stung until there is nothing to sting it again. There are all kinds of things that happen to you. I want you to know that there are people sitting right now, right here, that are going through that pathway in the spirit. You prayed and you said, God, use me. Anoint me and make me mighty. And God said, Amen to that prayer. You just did not know that what is happening to you is amen to your prayer. Lord, make me that multi-billionaire businessman. I will advocate for the kingdom. And God said, amen. It's just that we have not been taught how God answers our prayers. We have only been taught that result is the only proof that God has answered your prayer. But let me tell you, when you begin to mature in the things of the spirit, the fullness of affliction can be an answer to your greatest prayer. Is God speaking to us? So number one, afflictions and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith. Please look at me. Many of you have been fasting and have been saying, Lord, I don't have faith. I don't have faith. We taught on faith, I think it was last week or, or week after last. Many of us have been taught if you pray about something and it does not happen you never had faith if you had faith it would have happened let me tell you i honor and i respect those teachings but it depends on the dimension you are standing in the spirit for you to be able to say some things are you getting what i'm saying not every affliction is as a result of lack of faith there are men who you are going through the fire right now because you have faith that's the reason why you are going through it I feel God is ministering to people. Hallelujah. You stand on that board and you see what you did not want to see. And tears rolling down your eyes, you say, Lord, you are faithful. And other people look at you and say, when will you stop your laziness? There's no need trying to explain to them. It's a pathway you don't go in group. 
you go alone it's a lonely road no matter how men love you when you get to the end of that road they must leave you you can be in a relationship with your darling and sweetheart you will part ways are you getting one the fullness of affliction is customized with your name on it nobody can help you to take the fire out of love you know that thing they used to say no way it doesn't work when you are passing through the furnace of affliction you pass alone please listen to me hallelujah are you getting what i'm saying number two your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief your tears and your expressions of pain and do not necessarily reflect unbelief you must learn this there are so many people who have been stopped from crying in the church why are you crying rejoice look let me tell you it's not every seed you sow crying there is seed that weepeth bearing precious seeds it's not everything in life that happens with joy please are you hearing what i'm saying don't let any man fool you there are things that will happen in your life no matter how anointed you are it will bring tears out of your eyes tears and expressions of pain are not a sign of unbelief learn this and jesus wept the bible didn't say and he wept he mentioned the name of the person who cried and your jesus wept it's all right to cry and express pain you get to a point in your life where it overwhelms you there are times that lack of finances will eat you up and you stand and you are seeing i can follow one allergy somewhere and be blessed but i love god and i stay but the truth is the reality at the moment is that there is no food it's not like somebody is bringing food in the evening there's nobody that is sending you money anywhere the furnace of affliction the place where mighty men are that's that's where reformers emerge for david it was the cave of adulam he ran and he stayed there on asylum he ran away ran away from civilization and he hid there it was the place where he was made the wilderness was one place where he was made again you see it all through scriptures that men were separated in unpleasant places read your bible and see prophets who god made to sleep on one side of the bed have you read that read of prophets that god made to mix animal dung read of prophets who were made to marry prostitutes after suffering to keep themselves for decades god said the nature of my dealing with you will necessitate you marrying a prostitute so long are you hearing what i'm saying i know that many of you may not appreciate this teaching but this is the kind of teaching that will make you powerful hallelujah mysteriously at a point in my life i've shared my story when i was diagnosed with a fungal infection i prayed every prayer i know how to pray let me tell you if you say i didn't have faith you are joking i had the, the whole faith in the world they took me from hospital to hospital to hospital to hospital took samples of my head i became an object of experiment in that darkness i began to feel the pain of what it means to have an seemingly it was they couldn't find out what was wrong that's the painful part i've shared with you the story my mom has been here when she had to use iron sponge what you used to scrub the back of your pot huh? that's what was used on my head it's called the furnace of affliction that's why when some people come out of that furnace nothing moves them again you just shout and they're looking at you after i went see look let me a sign let me tell you a proof that you are passing through that what made you cry yesterday makes you laugh today you think about it somebody just says are you going to sleep with me as before for the money and you laugh they carry your money and go and they say there's no food and you say lord i give you glory you sit down in the midst of fire and you lie down and sleep you and the fire have become one the bible says you walk through it have you heard what i'm saying 
a time comes in the furnace of affliction where all your fears happen to you and there is nothing to fear again the fear of lack of membership happened the fear of lack of money happened the fear of the carryover happened at the end of it when you say god you are faithful there is no strings attached you suspected the relationship would break yes it broke but in all you have learned to be strong look let me tell you that that's the secret of courage you see some men go as if the devil even the devil doesn't know how to disturb them again because he doesn't know which part of their life he will touch satan satan is not a fool i've taught you this he will touch your finances and see your reaction if you do all this he won't touch it again because it means it doesn't matter to you then he will touch your health there is an aspect of your life you will touch the way you will react the devil will sing praise and worship and dance around and say i found it i found it for many of us every part he touches you shout and so god says no you are a babe you may be the president of your ministry but that furnace of affliction touches every area of your life until you become dead a dead man doesn't have feelings again so they just call you and say mr man your car had a ghastly motor accident and you laugh you say please can i can we continue what we're discussing and people say it's like you didn't hear me your 2.5 million car just crashed you say lord i give you praise let's continue the fondness of affliction has done something to you you are not a pure human being again something spiritual has altered your humanity it has made you strong are you hearing what i'm saying absolutely this is the kind of fondness of affliction that can make women to carry their dead children they say madam your child just died and they look and tears are coming out of their eyes and they are saying lord you are faithful when is the burial date and you are saying what sort of insensitive person no 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 the opposite of what i'm telling you is excessive emotionalism and that's what the, the system of darkness is doing so people send every picture on facebook and twitter you are angry you you snap yourself and say i'm angry and then five minutes later you eat and say now yam has come you see that that bad attitude is as a result of lack of the fullness of affliction there is a way you are built. They look at you and they say, after next week, they are coming to pack up your ministry and you laugh. Say, My God is faithful. You become unperturbed. You are not touched by anything. May God take us to that realm. If you don't get to that realm, worry alone will kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you do not get to that realm, I guarantee you, worry will kill you. Have you seen men who just sit down on their veranda and die? Have you seen people like that? They just sit down, bring me a stool, and they sit down and die. A man will go to a mango tree and put rope by himself, right? And put the rope from under up and hang himself. Ready? Go and lift the rope and hang himself on a tree. The fullness of affliction makes you a spiritual man please hear me it makes you a true spiritual man if you have never cried you have not gone through the furnace of affliction i guarantee you you have been passing through ac and the rest the furnace of affliction will bring tears in your eyes you will sit down one day and the whole world will change you you will not find value in anything one day you will sit down and you will look at your lecturer as he's teaching you are thinking as if you are 70 years old you are just thinking about life when that happens to you you are going through a fullness of affliction you sit down in the office and they even call your name and you cannot answer again not because you are depressed you are thinking about life you come to a point where nothing else makes meaning to you except his majesty is god speaking to us as a man of god you come to a point where five months nobody you are praying and fasting and it's during that time no invitation no honorarium right at that time you come to your fellowship and you find three people your sister your uncle the other guy who is coming to beg you those are the three people that are around 
Yet, you are making tremendous progress in the spirit. And you do not understand. The fullness of affliction. You stand to preach the generator spoils. Everything scatters. Your ego has been stung. On top of that, you pray for somebody who is sick and the person doesn't get hit. And they say, Pastor, I, this thing you are teaching us, we are not getting it. You come to a point where you just play songs, you play hymns and you just sit down. Everything. Remember all those country music. This world is not my home. You just sit down. People say, why? I, I mean, life doesn't make sense. Hear me. Don't just laugh. It's the fullness of affliction. Don't think it's happening because of lack of faith. If no one has taught you, rejoice when you are going through those things. Because sooner or later, it's a proof that you must arrive somewhere. Your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief. God taught me this. God taught me. I didn't read it in any book. God himself taught me that the fullness of affliction is the school of is part of the curriculum in the school of the spirit. No matter how anointed you are, I give you a guarantee under the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you must pass through that school. For you to be an approved man, that badge, you don't buy it, you don't bribe your way to it. The badge is a scar. A scar is a sign that your wound has healed. It's also a sign that there was once a wound. Let no man trouble me. For I bear. I went through it. Don't think I jumped the classes in the spirit. I went through it. God told you that you are going to become a financial prosperity giant. Get set for times of hunger. Let me tell you. A day will come the heavens will shut on purpose. Please hear me. If you like tight fire. Some of us that tight fire brigade fearful tight. Lord watch it oh. I'm dropping this thing. If the heaven doesn't. There's an army. Rising up. There's an army. Rising up. Listen. There was a time I gave everything. That I had. Nothing was happening. I've just said you. I could not afford a suit. Let me tell you. And I feared God. I used to go for ministrations. I will never forget one time I went for a ministration. Rain beat me. It was time for the ministration. No car to pick me. Right? The church is, uh, is around. Is, is not too far from here. This secondary school. Somewhere there. One church that invited me. It was raining. And they were ringing my phone. They didn't. That time there was no protocol. No nothing. But I had prayed and fasted. And I got up. I said, Lord, no matter what it is. Everywhere was a pool of water and it was muddy. I came out, held my Bible and I started praying in tongues. Let me tell you. I said, I'm going there. I was praying. I said, Lord, I passed through it with joy. A day will come, people will hear me. When I got there to make matters worse, it was the strings that saw me coming and he ran out with an umbrella to help me and bring me in. When I got to the church, they made me to stay outside so that they would arrange a seat for me to sit down. There was no seat. When I got there, they were acting all kinds of drama and they were laughing. And then after everything, they whispered to me that please, I have 15 minutes. I should think of how to pass the time so that I can, I can, I can be snappy about it. It's called the furnace of affliction. Three days fasting. Not, not nonsense. Fasting six to six with proper spiritual exercises to go for. It's called the furnace of affliction. Many of you have grace, but nobody is honoring you. A day will come, they will honor you. Don't run too fast. If you jump classes, life will bring you back. There were times I preached, there was no... After the preaching, come Sam. They said, uh, my brother. Ah! You said you are a young man where? They used to call me Bro Josh then. Not Apostle. Apostle Fire. Bro Josh. Where? Where? Ah, you are a young man. Uh, may God honor you. The way you are going. You will be a bright young man. May God bless you. I just stop a bike outside. Bike! And I climb happily and I go home. No honorarium, no nothing. It was the furnace of affliction. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? It was building me. So that my motivation behind the pursuit of God would not be money and honorariums. I 
didn't have money to buy a shirt i used to go somewhere there was one blw guy he always used to dry clean his suit and keep for me so when there's any ministration i'll run to him and collect and then one of my friends i'll go and collect his shoes that's how i would join everything my younger sister posted one of the pictures of one of the crusades and i looked at myself it was as if i entered inside i entered inside the temple i was lean to nonsense i had fasted my life out lean until i became i became like look don't just laugh because it's happening to you and the devil wants to deceive you to stop the process pass through it are you hearing what i'm saying pass through it let people mock you you're a pretty lady nobody's even looking at you you know that this is not the issue of demons demons have been dealt with when will my change come god says for others they can go but you he said god what did i do to you many of you have been asking god god is saying uh -uh, it's because you are different stay behind the devil can tell you there is an rng we can do for you there's one brother that is roaming around looking for a wife if you are interested we can we can come in and pretend as it is all those all those things people use those strategies and they compromise hallelujah they compromise say i will not compromise say one more time i will not compromise job said though he slay me yet will i praise him he said all the days of my appointed time i remember the day i got one proper honorarium i mean proper you know what i mean by proper something sizable enough for you to smile and say this looks like the anointing i carry that day I went back and I was smiling and God told me to sow it. I said, come on, Lord. Abba. And I did gladly. Listen. Part of what some of you receive tonight is not an anointing to go and start a church or to prove to your fellowship that I have arrived. It's going to be a lonely road. It's already happening to some of us. Right? You graduated and you finished school and you are smiling and you drop your you know that everybody can help you but nothing has happened brothers and sisters don't let men look at you and think that it's because you are lazy and foolish there is a dealing of the spirit hallelujah come sweetheart come. let me tell you come, 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 come. let me tell you something about this lady this lady is a graduate of banking and finance are you seeing this She's a graduate of banking and finance and has been in a dealing with, this, with the spirit. She left Asaba and she's going to be in Zaria for the next, probably the next, maybe close to a year because there is a prophetic dealing of the spirit that he's doing in her life. Are you getting me? Certified and approved by her mother. It takes crazy men to carry the anointing of the spirit against popular status quo praise the lord banking and finance with even french again yet for the excellency of that which she believes is locked up in her spirit let's, let me tell you if you want to be like everybody you will suffer like everybody if you are afraid of being different because of what you just try to be different the accusations are fierce everybody will say we are not doing it like this so don't be a stupid person wisdom is profitable to direct when god is telling you go left all prophets like the ones in the bible would say go right it's always be right god will say you go left it's a lonely road but it's the fullness of affliction god is speaking to some of us here there are some of us seated here inside and outside you trekked from your house or from your whatever your office or from school to come here and if you don't get boss you are trekking back don't complain see it as the school there is a lecturer talking to you in the spirit pay attention are you hearing what i'm saying there's no money coming from anywhere brother if there is no money relax get a cup of water and drink and smile and know that the world will celebrate you there is nothing happening in my life right now that is surprising me i'm only grateful about it hallelujah sister when god is done with you 
then you will know why he trained you when you see the kind of man he brings and the responsibility that is waiting you will know why your training was different are you getting what i'm saying who is god speaking to many of us are seated here although we are smiling please play my notes listen we are smiling but there are wounded soldiers sitting looking at me there are many of you this is how you held yourself spiritually to come here is you you pack yourself and the remaining of you and came for koinonia a lady came they brought her in from kaduna gas exploded on her gas cooking gas exploded on her burnt her face burnt her limbs and i was calling this lady and she said when can we come and see you i said this morning i thought they were joking by seven o'clock the whole family they carried themselves and they came they carried the lady when i looked at that lady and she was declaring the faithfulness of god beautiful lady turned to nonsense as a result of gas gas burnt her her feet and she loves god right many of you are touching your face nothing is happening to you <laughs> hallelujah do you know when i sat down and i prayed with this lady while i was praying with her her burnt hands she held my hands and as she was crying i could see these ladies you you could sense what she was saying i'm not giving up lord you are faithful when i finished praying she said i should take her she said she wants to walk by herself and she told her mom she said she wants to show the devil she wants to put the devil to shame that's what she said and this girl got up step by step we we're going and she was walking tomorrow you will see this woman raising wheelchairs on crusade grounds when she sees people with wheelchairs the school she passed through created a memory and that memory brings the anointing that's why sometimes you see me sit down during miracle services i've gone through some pain enough in my life we say we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched when was he touched during the fullness of affliction there are many preachers who are so innocent from what is happening to members they don't know what is happening so they don't know how to preach they don't know how to love they don't know how to be there i've suffered hunger there are times that people come to meet me and say apostle as i am like this i've not eaten and i look and i say i understand no matter what it is don't give up they are trying to fight tears in their eyes i say don't give up don't be afraid i told you crying is allowed in the fullness of affliction crying is allowed cry and wipe your tears and pass through your father looks at you and says you claim there are people here among us one of us here was disowned by his parents completely there are a number of us like that on account of our faith and our, i mean disowned for real they have been on their own there are students here who are sourcing school fees by themselves every one naira comes by faith i speak a word to you don't you think god has rejected you you are passing through what will make you a principality in your time that's how great men are they. I fasted for many days with nothing to break the fast. But I knew God was faithful. Hallelujah. God. That's why today, if you like, bring, bring, bring a bottle of drink that is one million and give me. I'll drink it, drop it and continue what I'm doing. Because I've passed through a furnace of affliction that gives me the appreciation to love people at every level are you hearing what i'm saying Affliction. it makes you to love people i went through things in my life i would never want anybody to go through it creates the true spirit of love this army are men and women that for now let me tell you all over the earth they are not manifesting yet brothers and sisters many of them are still passing through the fullness of affliction some of you it was your pain and tears that brought you to koinonia there is there is an evil in your family waiting and you are the one who is trying to emerge and you who is trying to bring your family into victory and deliverance the devil is is making them walk against you is that true some of you after this koinonia you are going back home and the spirits have gone in advance to manipulate and orchestrate trouble. Some of you, as you are reaching home, is with a slap, they welcome you. They say you went to the guy's house and be keep quiet. It's not time to defend yourself. Receive the slap, but realize that a principality, a reformer, is on his way to rise. Who is God speaking to? 
a reformer is on his way to grace. There are many of you, people offend you and they do nasty things, but God tells you, get up and go and apologize to them. And you say, God, for what? I think and God says, that's not, get up, go and apologize to them. Get up and go and apologize to them. There are times God will carry, tell you to get your best gift and give your worst enemy. It's a furnace of affliction. It's a place of beauty. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have the capacity to wax an album. You are about to wax the album and God says you are on your own. You are on your own with that album. He said, instead, carry the money and go and sow it to somebody and remain. Ha! I wish what I was saying were a lie, but it's true. You will pass through it. Some of you are going through it right now. You will pass through it. Brothers and sisters, the first crusade we went for, I think we were, I don't know if we were up to 50 or more than 50. But I preached my life out. We healed those we could heal and we gave Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. There is a prophetic word upon your life. That is why your life is the way it is going. Please listen to me. I'm speaking to you. There is a prophetic word. Some of you have written jam for years. Nothing has happened. Your colleagues have gone ahead of you and even graduated. Don't worry. There is a hand that is moving you. You may not see it. You may cry through the night. But I'm speaking to you. There is a hand that is moving you. There is an anointing you will soon encounter in the place of your pain. Where, where you sit down and there is nothing to do. All of a sudden you will find an anointing. There is a squeezing out, a pressing, like what my knee will call it, a breaking of the outer man and a release of the spirit. There is a breaking. You are, you are rising to a realm in the spirit. Sister, continue the prayers. Continue the Bible study. Don't worry. You may look like a fool. Continue. I spoke to a woman who told me that there was a time she was using groundnut oil. God is my groundnut oil. You know groundnut oil. To rub on her body. And she said, it will be great and it will be better for me one day. You want to be great? The furnace of affliction is your passport. This message may not be pleasant. It's a series we are taking. It's called the emergence. We are looking at the making of reformers. The mystery of the furnace of affliction where men are made it is the place you will cry your cry till there is no tears to cry again it is the place you will call for help and heaven is silent it is the place where your challenges keep multiplying before your face by the day it comes to a point where as the mountains surround jerusalem that's how everything has surrounded you where you are praying for something to be better another thing comes up the bible says they kept mounting themselves on job first his animals and everything died lightning came and scattered his building then he was told that he still one report after the other and job just sat on the ground he said naked i came and he began to speak a lot of things let me tell you something the fullness of affliction will get you to a point where you can't talk again your silence becomes your prayer and God hears it because that is the time you will be talking the loudest you sit down you can't open your mouth to say God is unfaithful but to say God is faithful becomes difficult and it's not a sign of unbelief hallelujah that's the point where everything in your life does not seem to work yet you are making spiritual progress yet you are growing spiritually you are suffering from a sickness that you are healing others of. You lay hands on them and the power of God gets them free. But you have prayed and fasted for months. And this thing does not go. I bring you a matured message to the body of Christ. There is a making of reformers across the entire earth. These men, their dealings look harsh. But my brothers, let me tell you something. Do you know how the eagle trains the eaglet to, to, to fly? It picks it up and throws it away and just allows it if you do and it keeps moving around and then eventually it comes back picks it up takes it back and throws it away that's why the eagle does not just fly it soars 
when other beds are moving around the eaglets when i was an eaglet i went to a lot there are things you go through in life that kills fear somebody looks at you and holds a gun and says i will kill you all of a sudden you remember how many in my life too many things do you know why i don't fear cars jam me one huh you, you see all the things that have happened in my life Abba. no human being born of a woman can kill me i'm telling you this it's not pride you don't know i told you i've entered car where the armed robbers were shooting I, I, okay no they didn't shoot we we're coming from portacourt right armed robbers i was sitting on c2 luxurious boss you know c2 the one that the, the driver is down you are the one in front there are perils you go through in life that make you mature that's what releases the anointing life has squeezed you so much there's nothing to squeeze there again you are a dead man in christ you have no reputation of yourself and then when you never expect it the light will shine it will never happen when you joseph never saw in a vision that by the next day he will be the prime minister probably he now said oh lord let me be in this prison for five more years five years is enough for me not knowing that that was the last night he would have been grateful if he was told that he would stay just five more years but that night he was at the entrance of another realm leaving the furnace of affliction forever hallelujah I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to trek from that place near Chicken Republic till aviation. I was trekking like a fool on the streets of Zaria. If I meet you with that madness and I say I want to marry you, what will you go and tell your father? You say, Daddy, there is a, a madman, there is an idiot that claim God is calling him. Your father has said, Not my daughter. Right? Shege barata kalabaya. Lord, for you I will do it. I may look like a madman, but so be it. Look, it takes unusual people. The fullness of affliction makes you a human being plus something else. Right? And that's what you need. A human being plus an anointing. A human being plus a grace. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Let me stop here because of our time. The making. The making. There is a making, brothers and sisters. There are many of us who have been bereaved. There are some of us, a lot has happened to you. There are some of us, what you are seeing in the spirit and what is happening in your life are east and west. I bring you a word. It is a furnace of affliction. If it has an entrance, it has an exit. You may walk through it so slow, but the day you will come out, you, you will be without information. You will, you will step into an anointing you will never recover from. You will step into a level of grace you will never recover from. The day Jesus appeared to me, I was not prepared for that visitor. I just loved him. I wanted him with my life. And then he appeared to me. I perceive in my spirit that there are some of us who are coming to the end of those seasons of affliction they have lasted years you have done ev let me tell you when that season comes to an end you don't need connection everything works for you including your enemies it's a sign that that season has ended and so god stamps it upon your life jesus died and was in the grave all of a sudden while they were discussing his death jesus the christ he got up he was on his way to emmaus and two people were saying have you had ah this weekend was a bad weekend for the disciples so jesus died and the man said really he died brothers and sisters but he only died for three days what you are passing through will not kill you if you would have killed you you would have died since this is how you know it's a fullness of affliction because in it you never die you go through everything that can kill you but when all the dust settles you are still standing this is a message for you to preach to some of our parents they have done their best some of you right now you are the ones feeding your families although you are students it's you that sends money mommy take 2k and your mother is saying lord when will you change our story tell her mommy there is a reform arising in this house that is the reason like the blood that was put there is a mark that is upon this family 
as, as, as we are sitting, there are mega ministries that are rising. But listen, it will not rise by claiming. Your tears is what will qualify you to climb that altar. That's what will make your altar sacred. That's what will make your anointing uncommon. It is good to receive impartations. But in the furnace of affliction, you dig your own well by yourself. You dig that well until you find the water. We are going to pray. There is nothing that you are passing through that is forever. I want you to know this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you pass through it, you will know that God is a miracle worker. When you pass through it, you will know that God is mighty. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. This is how the reformers will emerge. The first dimension of the dealings of the spirit is the mystery that is shrouded in the furnace of affliction. You will pass through pain. You will pass through rejection. You will pass through criticism. They will misunderstand you. You don't need to defend yourself. You will pass through all kinds of things. The Bible says do not count it as though it's a strange thing. When you pass through fiery trials, lift your voice and begin to pray. Koinonia. Everyone pray. I draw strength. I draw strength from the journey ahead. I draw strength for the journey ahead. Pray. I draw strength in the name of the Lord Jesus. I draw strength for the days of criticisms. I draw strength for the days of weaknesses. The days when there is no result in my life. The days when there is no result in my church. The days when there is no result in my career. I draw strength to face the carryovers that I have. I draw strength to face the mockery. I draw strength to face this pain, this sickness in my body. I've been married for five years. No child, I draw strength. Go ahead and pray. He said, and Elijah went in the strength of that bread. 40 days journey. And Elijah went in the strength of that bread. Pray. Pray. I draw strength for my family. They may be persecuted. My father has lost his job. Mother lost her job. But I draw strength. The storms do not come to kill me. They come to make a reformer out of me. I am part of the program of God. I'm part of the program of God. I may cry for now. I may weep for now. I may not have a helper. But I lift my eyes onto the hill. From whence cometh my help. I may pass through the fire. It will prune me. It will discipline me. It will teach me obedience. But in the name of Jesus, I will not give up. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Make a vow with destiny that I will not give up until I become a reformer. I will not give up. The sword of God is waiting for those who finish to be given. That mantle, that anointing, for your ministry, for your business. Pass through it. Lift your voice and pray. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. No matter what happens, I may cry, but I will not give up. I may weep. Shake it. Hey, hey, hey. There is an anointed man rising from this pain Out of these ashes Out of these ashes There is a general A custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom The reward for the pain Is the 
anointing. The reward for the pain is the anointing. The reward for the pain, the reward for the scar, the reward for the crying is a new song. He will give you a song in the spirit. You will do great business for the kingdom. Therefore, arise, pass through it. I bring you a prophetic word. Pass through it. It will not kill you. The storms will rise. The storms will rise. You will fall it, but pass through it. You will cry many times. Pass through it. You will endure. You will endure hardship. You will endure hunger. Pass through it. I won't give up. I refuse to give up. There is a reformer. There is a principality. There is an anointing coming out through my pain. There is an anointing story. I'm writing history. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. The last prayer point is we are going to declare the faithfulness of God. Some of you are crying. Don't let it embarrass you. You are going to say, Lord, through the pain, I say to the heavens, you are faithful. I've been mocked, but you are faithful. I saw the carryover, but my God, you are faithful. They called me a failure. They sacked me from the job. But Lord, you are faithful. He said he will marry me. After introduction, he talked me. God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. I lost my brother through the pain. You are faithful. I lost my father through the pain. You are faithful. I lost my pain. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me trouble. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me pain. You are faithful. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me a carryover. You are still faithful. My integrity ministry has relegated me to the background. You are faithful. For I will like an edifice. Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. And all the days of my time, I will wait. Me, but I will wait. I will be misunderstood. But I will wait. When all is said and done, the purposes of the kingdom will be granted to me. Hallelujah. We have one minute. I'd like you to pair yourselves into two and speak strength into your brother. You may be the whole you may be holding the hands of someone who came to this place ready to give up. I'd like you to speak strength and say there is a supply of the spirit. I speak to you. You saw your result yesterday. Seven carryovers. You don't know where you will start from, but I speak strength from the throne. They threw you away from the job and they said what you study cannot give you a living. Your ministry seems to have died. No one is recognizing your grace, but I speak strength. Speak strength. Prophesy strength. Don't give up. I release strength upon you. You can't give up at this time. You have gone through too much. You have gone through too much. You are already getting to the end. Don't give up. I supply spirit power. I supply strength from the throne in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now look at me. 
very quickly I want to pray specially and I just want you to indicate by lifting your hands you don't need to come out here there are people who came tonight and all you came to do is to receive strength you have come to the end of your road please not everybody I just want you to lift your hands as I minister to you things have happened you had news in your family humanly speaking there's no strength to continue this thing has worried you you can't even pray again you have prayed every prayer you know how to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus receive a supply of the strength of the spirit I speak to you you are coming out of this you are coming out generals before you have passed through it they didn't die you will not die in it your Redeemer still lives he may look silent but he will speak he may look silent but he's preparing a table before you you may not have money in your pocket but I want you to know that you shouldn't compromise the hand of your God is coming for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray for families here represented who have come to the end of the road you have done all you know to do and nothing seems to be working I want to announce to you that there is prophecy at work in your life there is the making of a reformer it's part of the birthing process Zion does not give birth without traveling he said as soon as Zion travels there is a there is there is a a, a labor pain in the spirit and it's because of what is about to be birthed in your life pass through the pain like a woman passes through the pain it may last for hours for some women it may last for days others it may even require surgery but make sure the baby is not lost make sure you keep it because that baby represents your prophetic destiny keep that vision cry but keep the vision in the mighty name of Jesus Christ lift your hands and begin to thank God for his word hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord now keep standing those who are worshiping with us for the first time if this is your first time please let's not distract because I still want to prophesy a blessing to us before we go if this is your first time please find your way to the front find your way to the front if this is your first time Koinonia celebrate them what a time to come God brought you to hear something that will set you on fire Keep coming. like you to just lift your hands as a family of faith I like us to thank the Lord for his faithfulness thank him for the miracles thank him for the signs the wonders thank him for the manifestations of his hand in our midst please bless him world over azaria family following give him praise we choose to say thank you we choose to say you have done all things well you have done me well you have done me you have done me well, Jesus. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well, Jesus. Sing it from your heart to him. You have done me you have done me well 
you have come. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well. Father, we see your mighty hand in our midst, week in, week out. Our lives are full of testimonies of your goodness, healings, deliverances, liftings. These are the Lord's doing and we have come to say thank you. We are not ungrateful. We return like the one leper to say thank you, Jesus. We are not confused as to who is the doer, the mighty things that you do in our midst. Men may focus their attention on us, but we redirect them to Jesus, the doer, the worker of wonders. Thank you, Father. Forever we declare that this place remains a house that projects Jesus. It is true that we are the vessels that you use, but beyond us may men see you. In the name of Jesus Christ, beyond us may men see your power. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hands. Your majesty, majesty, forever I am changed by your love, in the presence of your majesty, forever I am Changed by your love. Hallelujah. There are five things that will always happen for as long as we live serving the purposes of God in and through this platform. Number one, every time we gather there must be encounters an encounter is an experience that makes god and his principles real in your life encounters number two there must be transformation the name given to the process that makes you become like christ in experience number three we must give the holy spirit an opportunity to reveal the love and the power of Jesus through signs, wonders, and miracles. Let me tell you, I believe in miracles. I really believe in miracles. Number four, there must be impartations of all sorts. An impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. Men can carry graces. And our possibilities in this kingdom are defined by the kinds and the levels of graces that we carry thou anointest my head with oil and i see the proof of what is on my head by looking at my cup it doesn't anoint my cup if something is wrong with my cup the problem is not the cup the problem is what is on my head and then finally we must always provide an opportunity for fellowship how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his beard, his garment. He says, there the Lord hath commanded the blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Just a few minutes and we'll be seated. But while I sat back there, I think it was David who was ministering. I, the Lord was showing me a vision. And in that vision, I saw someone with what looks like... Um, 
a cleaner you know when you write on a board and you're cleaning that's what i saw happening just cleaning and the scripture that came to me is blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us and i'm just going to raise one song we'll be seated shortly but i want you to bring all those under the anointing there are families this is not just individuals individuals may be under the anointing but this is a ministration for families there are handwritings that have followed people for many years you may not even know handwritings that authorize favor to leave you handwritings that authorize good things to leave you healing rain is falling down healing rain is falling down I'm not afraid Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. One more time, let it be from the depth of your heart. Your healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. In the main auditorium all the overflows down to the basement and outside our zaria family following our global family following i stretch my hands and i decree and declare everyone who belongs to this category where there are handwritings please bring them out and ordinances that will not let you go this is koinonia and in the name of jesus the christ of god exalted both as lord and king i declare that those handwritings are blotted out now those handwritings are blotted out now everywhere whoever has been a victim of demonic writings kataparuskiata writings on females writings on males writings on educated ones uneducated ones writings that wait for seasons to be activated in the name of jesus christ I declare right now may those writings be blotted out writings against your finances writings against your health writings against your victory writings against your lifting in the name that is above all names this night this night not tomorrow not next week not Monday this night open your mouth begin to declare I blot out by the power of the blood every handwriting help them every handwriting lift your voice and pray there is power in the name of jesus there are miracles in the name of jesus there is power in the name of Jesus. It breaks every chain. It removes every chain. Yeah. It breaks every chain. Please don't be distracted. You are in church. We are praying. God is settling serious issues here. We came to receive i'm still praying god is not done yet listen to me listen there are families there is a limit on you nobody rises beyond that limit it doesn't matter whether you travel abroad it doesn't matter whether you back a phd it doesn't matter there seems to be a limit right now in the name of jesus at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus in the main auditorium down to the basement outside following from any nation as you shout that bar that has been set that you will not cross in the name of jesus the son of the living god fire bones starting to pieces are you ready now one two three shout jesus 
upon families upon destinies bring them out every limit placed upon you every embargo placed upon you upon your political career upon your business now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is please bring them out Hallelujah. Please pay attention. There are families here that never finish anything. You start, but it never finishes. No matter what, whether it's a building project, whether it's your spiritual life, it does not, the finisher's anointing is not there. The moment you start, something must happen on the way and abort that destiny. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. If there is any family here that is under the yoke of aborting glorious destinies, at the count of three, I want you to shout that name again. That is above all names. As you shout that name, that yoke must be broken. Are you ready now? One, two, three, shout Jesus. That altar, that yoke, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now the Lord is that spirit, the Bible says. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work, that same hand will complete it. I'm saying it again anyone who is in fraternity with dark powers stopping you from finishing what god said should be finished right now in the name of jesus may the earth open up and swallow them in the name of jesus christ Please don't be tired though. We are praying. You came here. Listen, one genuine encounter can bring to end decades of waste of time, waste of destiny. This is the house of God. I want to pray a very serious prayer before we sit down. How many of you know that destinies can be exchanged in the spirit? That you can be living a life you know this is not my life i'm living another person's script it's in the bible where kings slew their children so they will live long in the name of jesus i'm praying now anyone under the sound help them please help them help them anyone under the sound of my voice who is living a script that is someone else's destiny programmed by witchcraft programmed by necromancy powers manipulating your destiny at the count of three i declare in the name of jesus there must be deliverance for you are you ready to shout again my god and my king anyone here whose destiny has been manipulated spiritually financially by the power that raised christ from the dead let there be liberty right now one two three shout jesus liberty restoration liberty restoration liberty restoration
Hallelujah. Everything that should not have left your life, either by mistake it left, or by manipulations it left your life, and yet it is part of your prophetic preordination. I stand by the voice of prophecy. I call it back to your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I call it back to your destiny. Opportunities, I call them back by prophecy. Relationships, I call them back by prophecy. You'll be seated shortly, but I'm praying. Who is Jane? Jane. I'm hearing a name, Jane. Jane. Will be seated shortly. My sister, Victor, shift please. That lady lifting her hands. Yes, tap her for me. Lift your hands. The Lord is saying oppression has come to an end over your family. Take that grace right now. I command that spirit to let you go in the name of Jesus Christ. Never to return to you. I use as a point of contact and I speak to everyone here. The days of oppression come to an end now. Who is Jane? I'm hearing a name Jane. I presume there may be many people. Help them please. I want to pray for you. The power of God is going to come on one of you. There's a miracle that God is bringing to your family. Those who are out here, don't rush to go back to your seat. There's a reason why I ask that they bring you out. I will pray for you. But the Lord is asking me to minister to a Jane. And one of you standing here, the power of God is going to come on you very quickly. And you'll be back. I will pray for everyone. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. The Bible says, It shall be destroyed because of the anointing just help her hold her baby she can have the baby back after the prayer father anyone under the sound of my voice here that has been oppressed whose family has come under a demonic siege ah, i'm seeing like fire resting in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i declare right now that family i set on fire every covenant every ordinance i set on fire right now i set on fire right now i set on fire in the name of jesus christ i set on fire i burn every work of witchcraft every work of darkness against these families i release you into your prophetic destiny in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i just sense in my spirit before i pray for this once and we sit down i was so touched by the testimony of the woman and her her younger brother the woman with the boy who whose genotype was changed there are many people suffering silently under that demonic thing that appears like a medical condition there are dumb bases upon which the devil oppresses you in the name of jesus we come by the mystery of the blood the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things than the blood of abel and we declare these plagues are cancelled forever 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 Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. 
Thank you for lifting my hand. Let's return to your seats rejoicing. Let's give Jesus praise. There's someone just help them will be seated shortly but i'm seeing someone you came here with um your credentials in a brown file bring it come with it jesus the son of god I believe in you. I believe in you. Jesus. The Lord is setting that gentleman free. Age long captivity over his family stopping people from getting jobs and making progress but who shall say a thing and it shall come to pass when the lord has not declared it their, their deliverance is happening many people you see who are suffering it's not that they are bad people there are spirits that are standing the way of people my sister this lady in the name of jesus be delivered the one you are holding i stretch my hands for you and for your family the time has come for your liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. Miracles don't just happen. No. There is a gift called the walking of miracles. Look what is happening to them. Ladies and gentlemen, these are people who were minding their business, sitting and wondering why doors were not opening. What's her name? That lady. My dear, I want to pray for you. You believe in miracles? Help them also they don't fall down. Just help them there. There will be such an avalanche of jobs. You believe what I'm telling you. Not just for those who are out here. Not just for those who are out here. I'm speaking by the Spirit of God. I fear God and I will not tell you what God has not said. There will be you will see people come to stand here miracles after miracles the gospel affects the well-being of people not just their spiritual destiny the gospel the true gospel affects the well-being of people i prophesy as i've been commanded and i declare by the spirit of god the grace for increase on that wise let it come upon you supernatural jobs by the power of the Holy Ghost supernatural jobs for the glory of the name of the Lord for the advancement of the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ it says where you have been deserted so that no man would pass through you you would become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations For those of you who have come out here because there was a specific word for you in the name of jesus i don't care whether it's a fresh job or it's promotion in the name of jesus i place grace on you go back with this grace and let it work wonders on your life my friend what do you do huh you are I want to pray for you because what your own is not just a job there is a very serious increase that God is bringing 
Look at me. My friend, look at me. Just look at me first before you say amen. Understand what I'm saying. This is not just for you. But God wants to use you as a savior for your family. You believe that? You see, in this kingdom, when it comes from God, it does not have a component of self-centeredness in it. When he sends a word to Jacob, his intention is Israel. When he sends resources to Jacob, the intention is Israel. When he sends influence to Jacob, it is the character of men to be self-centered once it is me in this kingdom selfishness is sin it's not only bad is sin the character of love the law by which the new believer the new creation in Christ lives by is that it gives so this is already a message for someone receiving just for myself my mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. When he sends a word to Jacob, when he sends a lifting to Jacob, it is because he intends for it to reach Israel. Hallelujah. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear these words. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory when He has My friend, what's your name? This man. Huh? I want to pray for you. Where are you from? Don't be embarrassed. Don't feel bad. I have seen this thing more than 100 times as I minister to people. Every time the Lord opens my eyes and I see this tree and I see written on it A L E K U. You know what that is? I want to pray for you. That's what I'm seeing again. We are not prophets of doom. We are ministers of life. Once we minister to you, it is not informing you about the trouble. We are bringing you out. The real power of God does not just inform you about what is happening and leaves you there. It delivers you. It brings you out. I stretch my hands and I command that influence and that demonic spirit to let you and all who are connected to you go free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. May doors be so open for you that it will, you will marvel and wonder at the goodness of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help him please. In the name of Jesus Christ. I apologize for taking time. I hope I'm not wasting your time. There is a woman in here. This is about four years at least. You came here and your one prayer is fruit of the womb. Who is that? I'm seeing someone... Come. In this auditorium, not just those outside, I can I'll pray prophetically, but there is someone here. What's your name? What's your name? What's the name of this one? Huh? Lillian. Lillian, come. Well, I I I I'm not sure I heard your names. Come and stand. The person I want to pray for, you are Lillian. Who is Jessica? What's your name? Jessica. You are Lillian. Two of you, are you friends? You came separately. You believe in the power of God? How long have you been married? How long have you been married? This is the fourth year. I want to pray for you. You believe you will stand here with your children? I believe in miracles. The God that does wonders. Please don't cry. Father, I pray for these precious ones they have stood here trusting believing for many of you you have been prayed for again and again and again and you're standing here wondering i'm sure it will be like before remember what peter said master we have toiled all night he said but nevertheless at thy word 
I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. One of you will shout under the anointing loud in front here. When that happens, I just saw the healing power of God moving to you people. Now, you see, sometimes this is a ministry of signs and wonders. So I take out time to explain these things so that when they happen, you don't think this is a display of some superstition. But the Lord does these things many times so that we will fear Him. He also does it to strengthen our faith. Now I'm ready to pray. Look what is happening to them. Lift up your eyes to Him. You will arise again. He will come and save you. If you lift up your eyes to Him, you will arise again. He will come and save you. They looked unto Him and their faces were lightened. I stretch my hands and I declare, according to the time of life, I release an anointing upon all of you right now. I declare, by that grace, in the name of Jesus, like Eli declared unto Anna, according to the time of life, return with your miracle children. According to the time of life, return with your miracle children. And every power that is back of this tragedy, we dislodge it in the name of Jesus Christ. Look and Lee, my brother Lee. Look to Jesus Christ and Lee. It's recorded in His Word. Hallelujah. It's only that you look. The Lord bless you. Please go back to your seats. Return with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus. This is what happens when you come to church. Please be seated. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever follow. I will seek you in the morning. And I have learned to walk in your ways For step by step you lead me And I will follow you Hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord Tonight what you are about to learn will change your life In the name of Jesus Christ Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 defines in very clear terms the assignment of a true shepherd. Jeremiah chapter 3, please give it to us in verse 15. The assignment of a true shepherd. I will give you pastors according to my heart. And if they are according to my heart, they have the singular assignment to feed you with knowledge and feed you with understanding that means knowledge and understanding are divine meals when you are served with this meal of knowledge and of understanding there is a predictable outcome you will become something very exact very intentional i will give you pastors after my heart acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says and they continued steadfastly 
in the apostles doctrine they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers these are the requirements for growth and maturity in the spirit submission to doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayers so every time we gather i will not fail to let us know that we are here gathered to learn to be mentored to be baptized into an exact body of spiritual truth realize that every time we meet there is a making there is an evolution there is a transition that is happening to us it is not the same version of you who came two weeks ago that is seated now no light is transiting you you will get to a point where you are so full of the light and the power of the holy spirit the results will begin to speak inevitably they will speak hallelujah the lord put a very powerful teaching in my heart and i'm sent to the body of christ primarily even though koinonia as a global family is anointed us to minister his word but most of the teachings that i bring are for the body of christ regardless denomination regardless your the doctrinal differences that seem to divide us it is part of the reason why he brought us to this city and has projected us to the nations as instruments of unity balance dexterity and growth are we together we are lifted and we are strengthened in this kingdom not based on our longevity in the faith no time does not change anything time only reveals a 10 year old error can still destroy like a one year old error provided it is error are we together it takes understanding light it says but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light So tonight I pray in the name of Jesus Christ world over, Azaria family, Abuja family here, and all who are following from their homes, please pay attention. If you are distracted when the word of God is coming, be sure it is an attack. It's an attack because it takes focus and concentration to receive. There is an intellectual dimension to the reception of the word. It's not just a spiritual affair alone. Your mind has to be active. Your mind has to be fruitful. So even if your spirit is alive and your mind is distracted you see that that's why sometimes before the message comes god quickly settles issues like this because some of those issues are the things that distract people from listening while the word of god is coming someone is thinking how do i battle this issue how do i battle that issue praise the name of the lord psalm 34 and verse 9 the mystery of divine intervention i want to show you a very very powerful exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 let's go to exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 the mystery of divine intervention no matter who you are no matter your spiritual level your intellectual level you will get to a point in your life and your destiny listen carefully where there will be a need for a supernatural intervention in your life over the affairs of your destiny remember that what we receive every week here we are handed keys the assignment of keys is not only to open doors but to give you confidence that you cannot be limited the presence of keys suggests that you can no longer be confined and limited you can open the door at will 
and close the door at will revelations 3 7 and 8 right i'm he that was dead and now is alive and i hold the key of david please go back to verse 7 he of david he that openeth by reason of that key no man can shut and he that shutteth and no man can open because of a key that you hold these revelations and these mysteries are keys that grant us grace to command victory the victory of christ and the finished work of christ will remain prophecy and only remain a potential the reality of it is activated on the strength of the light that we know and we understand thoroughly articulated and then empowered by the spirit of god when you receive that revelation the grace for performance also comes with the revelation you see how it works you're not going to receive a grace for a dimension when the understanding of that dimension is not yet fruitful in your life so the anointing of the holy spirit follows revelations the anointing for prosperity follows the revelation of prosperity the anointing for spiritual growth follows the revelation for spiritual growth if you want the anointing you must want the understanding that brings and preserves that anointing are we together exodus 3 and verse 8 let's get to work very quickly and i am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey and unto the place of the canaanites the hittites amorites perizzites hevites and jebusites i am come down to deliver them divine intervention is one of the mysteries that provides a system of advantage to believers now as you know our dominion in this kingdom is based on the lights that we have but also based on the systems of advantage that we access no one is advantaged by default uh -uh. for as long as you are born here on earth doesn't matter if you come from a rich family you may have a financial advantage but that does not necessarily translate into a spiritual advantage are we together now through the revelation of god's word we begin to incorporate into our lives through the understanding of scripture systems of advantage favor mercy are we together speed relationships the anointing understanding wisdom so that you now begin to introduce these spiritual forces into your life and your destiny and in no time you will see that your life begins to reflect the image and the character of the christ in reality my little children he said of whom i travail until christ be formed in you he was speaking to believers those who were already saved but he was talking about the formation of christ it's one thing to potentially be a recipient of the life of god but the fullness and the riches of that life is released through understanding ephesians 4 and verse 18 having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you not some are children of the most high the next verse says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes bankruptcy of spiritual knowledge can even though you are saved you may never be able to walk in the fullness of those potentials an heir the bible says as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave even though he's an heir but provided he's a child void of understanding void of spiritual intelligence he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all he's under tutors and governors so it takes light 
Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.